All right, so just a forewarning guys, this video is gonna go into some real granular data and it's definitely gonna be one for the data geeks out there. So it's now been eight weeks since we started training after Ironman Australia, which means it's time to do some more fitness testing. So this week we had the standard set of fitness tests that I am trying to replicate every four weeks just so that I can monitor progress and I know exactly how I'm progressing, but more importantly, I know what I am responding to. So I know if I'm doing a particular style of training that I am actually responding well, or maybe I'm not responding well to that style of training. So the first test session of the week was Tuesday morning. I'm doing a lot of my test sessions first thing in the morning wherever I can, that way I can eat the exact same breakfast and I know that I'm controlling as many variables as possible. Tuesday morning, we've got 30 minutes at 145 beats per minute and 30 minutes at 220 watts. So this is a bit of a test session where we're gonna see what my lactate is at that kind of intensity. Should be around that first lactate threshold, so somewhere around the 1.5 to 2 millimole area. So not too hard of a session this morning, which is good because still pretty tired after last week. All right, here we go, 30 minutes targeting 145 beats per minute. All right, first one's done. Number will be up on the screen for what I held. All right, that's perfect. 1.5, five minute rest, and then 30 minutes at 220. So the takeaway there, which is really beneficial is that I can target that first lactate threshold now just by going at 145 beats per minute. So for that first round, power is not as important as heart rate because now when I'm out on the road, I can just target 145 beats per minute now. And I know that's gonna be usually consistently around that first lactate threshold. All right, 30 minutes at 220 watts now, let's go. Nice, good, consistent numbers there. So pretty happy with that, how that's, um, like those test results are actually pretty good because last time I did the lactate profile test, 220 watts was 1.6 and now it's down to 1.4. Just means we're still heading in the right direction. It's good. Quick cool down now and then uh, swim at lunchtime. So looking at these results and comparing them to previous tests, in June, when I first started training, we did 30 minutes at 141 beats per minute for 202 watts and then 30 minutes at 200 watts for 146 beats per minute. July, 30 minutes at 143 beats per minute was 207 watts with a lactate of 1.3 millimole. 30 minutes at 200 watts in July was 1.1 millimole. This month now, 30 minutes at 143 beats per minute gave me 225 watts with a lactate of 1.5 millimole. And then 30 minutes at 220 watts gave me 142 beats per minute with a lactate of 1.4 millimole. So essentially for the same effort, I've gone from 200 watts to about 225 watts over the last eight weeks. So I'm pretty happy with my improvement on the bike. Lunchtime on Tuesday, we just had a 1K for time. So I'm trying to do these ones fairly frequently, but look, I'm just gonna compare the two tests between the most recent one I've done now and the first one I did. So first one I did back in June, I did 16 minutes and 21 seconds. And for this test this week, I did 16 minutes and 10 seconds. So honestly, it's not a huge improvement in the swim. And I do feel like my swim has plateaued over the last eight weeks. And maybe it's because I am putting so much more effort in on the bike at the moment. I'm doing the biggest bike volume I've ever really done. And my swim volume has dropped off a little. Maybe I'm not as focused on the swim and that's making my stroke and fitness in the water deteriorate. But Either way, it's not too bad, but I definitely do want to see that closer to the 15 minute mark within the next few months. So from there, on to our key session for the entire month, and that is a session where I'm trying to simulate the demands of an Ironman. The way we do that is we do a four by one K four time in the pool, first thing in the morning, straight back home on the bike, and we have more or less a four hour time trial, although I'm not trying to go all out, I am still holding a little bit of reserve to try and make it a bit closer to an Ironman effort. Then we go straight off the bike and into an 8K run at 155 beats per minute. So let's go in order of swim, bike and run, and we'll have a look at the results over the last eight weeks. So the first test I did, we had the four by one K for time, and my times were as follows, 16.38, 16.45, 16.42 and 16.56, which at the time I was, I mean, satisfied with considering I hadn't done too much training after the race and I was just getting back into it there. 
The most recent times though, as follows, 1714, 1652, 1707, and 1726. So actually slower now than it was eight weeks ago. And look, as I said, I do feel as though my swim has really plateaued over the last eight weeks. And maybe it's a mindset thing. I mean, it is also worth taking into consideration that this was at the end of the biggest swim week I've ever done. So maybe I was a little bit fatigued, but I do also feel like I am struggling with the technique aspect of swimming at the moment. It is also the case too that I've been putting in a lot more effort on the bike at the moment and maybe that is taking away from any improvements that I could make in the water. Straight back home on the bike and we have more or less a four hour time trial, although I'm not trying to go all out, I am still holding a little bit of reserve to try and make it a bit closer to an Ironman effort. All right, warm up done, so now we've got four hours of good hard riding. Alright, one hour in. He's the left hit so far. Nice. Halfway, two hours in. Feeling pretty good. Just trying to keep my heart rate at about 150. Patience is a game and every night I say your name. Alright, three hours in, one hour to go, so that's start the last push, but here's the lap day. Alright, see what we can do for the last hour. Oh, all right, that's good, solid four hours. Oh man, 2.30 average, or 2.29, not too bad. I'll put up, I think last time I only averaged like 203 watts, so definitely getting stronger on the bike, but could have told you that already. 2.0, nice. So that means I was able to stay above my first lactate threshold for Pretty much four hours which is good i'm pretty happy with that so a solid zone three ride 20 minute cool down now and then we've just got an 8k run at 155 beats you might think that like considering this is trying to be a ironman simulation day that i should just go straight off the hard bike and straight out into the run because that would be the best way to replicate the demands of the ironman but i think the thing to consider is that i'm still in the middle of a pretty heavy training block haven't taken any taper in the lead up to this session and I'm not gonna take any rest after it. So just adding in these cool downs now, I think is a really good way to make sure that I am getting the recovery in that I need and that I'm not gonna to be too fatigued in the days after this workout. So still gonna get the pretty similar metabolic demands of an Ironman here. And it's still gonna be a pretty good test session to figure out where my fitness is at. So, 20 minute easy spin now, and then we're out for a nice run. Now, eight weeks ago when we first started, this was just a three hour time trial. But now that I've built up a bit more fitness, we've made it a four hour time trial. So keep that in consideration. But for the first test that I did, for the three hours, I held 207 watts with an average heart rate of 150 beats per minute. My lactate at the first, second, and third hour was 2.8, 2.0, and 1.9. So there was a bit of a fade in effort towards the end, or a bit of a fade in, I suppose, intensity towards the end. Now for the most recent test, we made it four hours, and for that one, I held 229 watts average for 149 beats per minute, with my lactate as 2.0, 1.8, and 2.0, so quite stable throughout. And I'm pretty happy with this improvement on the bike, because in eight weeks, I've gone from being able to hold 207 watts for three hours, to being able to now hold 229 watts for four hours. So that's an extra 22 watts and an extra hour on the bike, so I'm quite happy with that. 
Then we go straight off the bike and into an 8K run at 155 beats per minute. The reason why we restrict it to 155 beats per minute is first of all, it can really reduce the amount of fatigue that I get from this session by controlling that effort. And second of all, whenever I've done Ironman runs in actual races, my heart rate's always between 155 to 160. So I know that whatever pace I can essentially hold for 155 beats, that's gonna be pretty close to what my Ironman pace would be anyway. So this session here, it gives us a ton of data on terms of where my fitness is very specifically to an Ironman, but it doesn't give me an overwhelming amount of fatigue that I would get if I was to do a full Ironman. Now, eight weeks ago, I held 155 beats per minute for an average power of 270 watts. And this most recent test, 152 beats per minute this time for an average power of 288 watts. So again, quite happy with my progression on the run. I don't feel as though that is as significant as the improvement that I've had on the bike. But nonetheless, it still shows that I think the extra effort that I've been putting in on the bike is correlating or translating quite well to the run. All right, so I've already gone through quite a bit of data, I understand, but this next section is gonna be one for the real data geeks. So in all honesty, I don't really understand many of the things here. This is all coming directly from my coach, but I still think it could be quite interesting information for everyone. So looking at my improvements on the bike since June, that's 57 rides we've done. And what my coach has done is he's divided it up into three blocks of 19 rides. Looking at the first 19 rides, Average cadence, 79 RPM. IF, which I believe is intensity factor, I did have to Google that, was 0.81. EF, which I believe is efficiency factor, again, I had to Google that, was 1.42. Average decoupling was 1.8. Now for the second block of 19 rides, average cadence, 79 RPM. Average intensity factor, 0.77. Average efficiency factor, 1.39. Average decoupling, 1.5. For the latest 19 rides, average cadence, 77 RPM. And then my coach has put a note here, doesn't look like much, but that is a solid drop and we need to keep an eye on this. The average intensity factor, 0.76. The average efficiency factor, 1.45 and the average decoupling 0.3. And I'll read what my coach has written at the end here. So in summary, we see what we are doing is working. Your aerobic decoupling on average is improving greatly and is in a great range that most people don't see. Your intensity factor is slowly improving. Your efficiency factor has some work, but as we would like to see it at around the 1.7 mark. Cadence is creeping lower, so I don't know if this is a good thing or not yet. We'd like to see a few of your aerobic rides which are with a much higher cadence of 90 plus RPM to really push that metabolic efficiency and see what happens. Now I do, it's, it's a funny one when he mentions the cadence there because I do feel a lot more comfortable at that lower cadence, around 75 to 80 RPM, just feels quite natural to me. And whenever I try and push up to like 90 RPM, it feels overly strenuous but it might be worthwhile me uh, pushing myself in that regard because it could make me more efficient in the long run now another thing you guys might be interested in and honestly i don't even look at this stuff myself but a few people have asked me about it is my tss score and my critical training load so i'll just run through the last four weeks my tss score has been 1556 1522 1625 and 1,779. My TSB has been negative 3.9, negative 10.7, negative 32, and negative 50.3. My critical training load over the last four weeks has been 179, 184, 192, and 202. I literally honestly have no idea if those numbers are high, low, good, average. I honestly never even check. I just take the workouts that my coach gives me, put my head down and get to work. So total hours of training over the last four weeks, we had 21 hours, 17 minutes, 23 hours, 37 minutes, 27 hours, 33 minutes, and finally 28 hours, 42 minutes was the most recent week I did. All the volumes and everything will be up on the screen and I'll run you through the swim, the bike and the run. Don't need to talk through that. But look guys, at the moment, in all honesty, I'm feeling really quite good. Um, I think improving the quality of my diet and my fueling for each session, working with S-Fuels now, it's had a huge impact on my ability to recover and train at a higher intensity and a higher volume. I actually didn't even realize that last week was almost 29 hours. That's um, it's probably one of the biggest weeks I've ever done. And I actually feel really quite fresh at the moment. And I think I can just, at this stage, I do honestly believe I can just knock out week after week 
just like that as long as you know work and other life commitments don't come up in terms of my overall fitness i really feel each week that i'm getting stronger on the bike the swim i just feel like i'm struggling a lot in the water at the moment and maybe i need to take a different mental approach i don't know if it's a physical thing or if it's just because I'm not putting enough effort into actually developing my stroke and technique. I'm pretty happy with the run too. We're just back on the old classic routine I would always do with the run, where Tuesday, Thursday, we do almost 20K with about 15K as the main set of work and a lot of tempo efforts. And then Sunday, we do a long run. And Saturday, yeah, we do actually do a, a short run off the bike. So all in all, I'm feeling quite strong, definitely progressing as, as well as I could honestly hope for. I mean, my main focus is definitely still the bike because that is the thing that if I'm ever gonna go under nine hours, I really need to be strong on the bike. And look, I know I'm doing a lot of training indoors at the moment. I actually do have a road bike on its way coming, so hopefully I'll be able to get outside and ride outdoors a lot more. In all honesty, when people ask me why I don't train outdoors as much, it's it's the safety aspect. Um, I just don't feel very comfortable riding on the roads. I don't like taking the risks. And to me, if I can ride indoors and get even 75% of the same value um, for 0% of the risk, I, that's a trade-off that I'm kind of willing to make. Race is coming up. I'm definitely looking at the race calendar. Honestly, for the last couple months, ever since I am in Australia, I just wanted to put my head down and get back to work. I didn't really want to think about racing. Definitely strongly, strongly considering Ironman Western Australia, but it's just the financial side of things that's making it really hard for me to make any commitments at the moment. It's really hard to find accommodation there. Flights are quite expensive, and then obviously the race entry is expensive enough as it is. So look, if I don't do Bustleton, I'll definitely find some more local races to do, and either way, I'm definitely gonna be at Ironman Australia again next year, and the Sub 9, that's really all this channel is gonna be dedicated towards. But my main focus at the moment is head down, getting to work, and I'm really trying to put a lot more effort into making some good, consistent YouTube videos. So yeah, guys, thanks for the support. Let me know what you'd like me to change in the videos, and I'll be back again next week.